Hello, welcome to my second tutorial. Today I would like to show you, how to set up Modbus TCP IP communication between Siemens S7-1200 and Modbus Terminal. Modbus Terminal is great for testing, as you can see incoming messages and can also reply back to PLC. Instead of the terminal, you can use any device which supports Modbus. For the PLC programming, you just need TI Portal, no special license or hardware is needed. All functions are already included in standard license. If you would like to use Modbus over RS-485, there is a neat little module, which you can plug in front socket of the PLC, and it's also inexpensive too. It's a good idea to know a little bit about Modbus protocol, I will explain the basics, but for a more in-depth information, check the web. Modbus is master-slave protocol. Master is also called client, slave is called server, which is a little bit confusing. Slave is listening on given port, master is responsible for initiation of the connection. For storing of the data, Modbus uses registers. For values they're called holding registers, for binaries they're called input registers. Modbus message consists of address of opposite device, function, data and CRC check. There are four functions, every one is defined by number. Three is read holding register, four is read input register, five is write single coil and six is write single holding register. In tier portal they are numbered slightly different. See the help file. Alright, let's start. First, we create a new project in Tier Portal and add S71200 PLC. Let's change the IP address. Be aware that computer on which we're running Modbus client, have to have IP address from same subnet. I will activate clock memory bits. They are good for timings. You can find Modbus functions in right panel, under instructions, open communication tab. As the PLC will be master, in other terminology client, we will insert MB client function. I will create DB for controlling of function and also for connection definition. If you are unsure about anything, Visit help file, it's well described there.
connection definition have data type of TCON IPv4. Interface it is shown in hardware configuration. ID is identification of the connection. If you using more than one Modbus function, you have to have unique id for every function. Connection type is 11 which means TCP. Active means master. IP address is address of PC in this case. Modbus usually uses port 502. In this table you can see Modbus function and corresponding Siemens numbers. Now I need DB for sending and receive data. Create array of int or boolean, but insert whole array, not individual elements. Data address is starting address of holding register, which we going to read from. Data length is how many bytes from starting address we going to read. Data PTR is receiving array in DB. That should be all. Now just download the program.
I'm using Modbus Slave software, which is running on the PC, which is connected to PLC by Ethernet cable and have IP defined in connection DB. In the client, select write port, write address and click listen. In log window you can see incoming connection from PLC, but no incoming data. Status display 7004, which could be caused by Modbus unit id, which is defined in Modbus function db. This id is usually used in Modbus RTU communication, but some devices requires this id to be one. Check your device manual. Now Modbus slave client reads properly, that Siemens using function number 3, but holding registers in slave clients are empty, so I will add some random values and we can see they're being transferred to PLC. For sending function I will also use modbus client function, but parameters will be the same. Only ID will be different, as I said earlier.
for writing multiple registers, Siemens uses function number 116. Now just add some numbers to sending DB and will be received by slave client. In the case, it's not working check status number. But this number is being overwritten, so it's a good idea to save its value, when error bit is on. Sometimes you have to restart PLC to make the function to work. Some devices requires to disconnect after every transfer, other not, refer to your device manual. Also be careful when editing dbs. If you're online with db, there are two values, when is starting value, which is loaded when plc starts and other one monitored value, which is in the plc right now, always change both. Also check the firewall, if it's not blocking the mod bus traffic. That's all folk. Links for software and projects in below the video. Thank for watching.